This video will show you how to smoke ribs to perfection. They'll turn out incredibly tender, juicy, and delicious. Step 1. Heating the coals. Place down several fire lighters. Place your chimney starter on top of the fire lighters. Fill with coals. Light the fire lighters. While the coals are heating up, it's time to prepare the ribs. You'll need dry rub and American mustard. Generously apply mustard to one side of the ribs, then evenly spread it around. Flip the ribs and repeat. Then open up your dry rub and once again apply a generous amount to the ribs. Ensure it's fully covered. Flip and repeat. Now check on the coals. They should be red hot and have very little smoke radiating from them. It's time to heat the smoker. To start, ensure the bottom and top vent is fully open. Remove the lid. Remove the top grate. Carefully pour the hot coals into the bottom of the smoker. Place down the top grate. Place down the ribs. Put the lid back on. When it comes to smoking ribs, it's incredibly important that you get the temperature right. For pork ribs, I recommend heating the smoker to 135 degrees Celsius. That's 275 degrees Fahrenheit. That's getting too hot. Close the bottom vent. The temperature is still rising. That's still way too hot. Remove coals. That's still too hot. Remove more coals. That's still too hot. Remove more coals. That's still too hot. Remove more coals. That's not hot enough. Add coals. That's too hot. Remove more coals. That's not hot enough. Add coals. That's too hot. Remove coals. That's still too hot. Remove more coals. Too cold. Too hot. 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 Too cold. 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 Too
did you just say to me? I told you to go f yourself. Pineapple doesn't belong on a pizza. Say it again. See what happens. Pineapple doesn't. Say it again. Pineapple doesn't. <laughs> Pineapple does belong on pizza. Add pineapple. Add pineapple. Add pineapple. Add crushed pineapple. No, don't add eggs. Don't add eggs. I said don't add eggs! Add all the eggs you have. Add cheese. Click on low heat for five minutes. Serve and enjoy. Today, I'll show you how to make authentic kimchi. This homemade kimchi is incredibly delicious and easy to make. Simply follow the step-by-step -step instructions and you'll make the best kimchi you've ever had. All you need is Napa cabbage Spring onion Ginger Garlic Onion Chili flakes Fish sauce And salt To start, take your Napa cabbage and dice it using a sharp knife. Transfer to a large bowl. Fill with water. Now you need to add salt. Mix it thoroughly together. Cover with a plate for 60 minutes. Drain and rinse. Now it's time to add the spring onion. Then add the onion. Then add the ginger. Then add the garlic. Then add the chili flakes. Then add the fish sauce. Then add the eggs. 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 Mix thoroughly. It's time to transfer the mixture into a jar. Ensure the lid is completely closed. Place the jar in the fridge for 20... It's time to transfer the mixture into a jar. Place the jar in the fridge for 20... It's time to transfer the mixture into a jar. Place the jar in the fridge for 20... It's time to transfer the mixture into a jar. Place the jar... In it's time to transfer the mixture Place into the jar a jar. In it's time to transfer the mixture Place the jar into a in jar. It's time to transfer the mixture Place into the a jar. jar in the fridge. For Put on gloves. It's time to transfer the mixture into a jar. Place the jar in the fridge for 20. It's time to transfer the mixture into a jar. Place the jar in the fridge for 24. It's time to transfer the mixture into a jar. Leave the jar where it is for 24 hours. After 24 hours, the vegetables have fermented, creating a delicious batch of homemade kimchi. This is by far the best homemade kimchi you will ever try. Look how good it turned out! It looks absolutely delicious, and it only took a few minutes to make. Enjoy! Instructions, and you'll make the best beef wellington you've ever had. You'll need black pepper, flaky salt, canola oil, Dijon mustard, button mushrooms, garlic, shallots, beef tenderloin, prosciutto, and puff pastry. Start by finely chopping four garlic cloves. Then, six shallots. And finally, 600 grams of button mushrooms.
You want the mushrooms to be as finely chopped as possible. Place a pan over medium heat. Add the chopped garlic, shallots, and two tablespoons of canola oil. Sweat the vegetables until they start to turn translucent. Then add the mushrooms. Cook for approximately 10 minutes until the majority of their liquid has released and simmered off. Place the mixture into a bowl and put to one side. Next, we're going to season the tenderloin with salt. And pepper. Ensure both sides are thoroughly covered. Next, add a generous amount of canola oil into a pan. Bring to high heat. Then sear the tenderloin on all sides for a couple of minutes. Ensure you sear both ends too. Remove from heat and immediately cover completely with Dijon mustard. It's important to do this while it's still hot. This ensures that the mustard flavor is fully absorbed into the meat. Next, you're going to need your prosciutto, puff pastry, and mushroom mix. Before you start crafting the beef wellington, you're going to need to tenderize the meat. Pick up the tenderized tenderloin. Now it's time to craft the beef wellington. Place down your puff pastry. Layer on the prosciutto. Evenly spread the mushroom mix. Gently place down your beef at the base. Now you're going to need some egg wash. Gently spread the egg wash over both ends of the puff pastry. Grab the puff pastry and slowly roll it around your entire tenderloin. And garnish with flaky salt. Gently pick up the beef wellington. Heat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius, fan-forced. Carefully place it into the oven. Bake for 30 minutes. Remove from oven. Serve and enjoy. Look how good this beef wellington looks. The meat inside is juicy and tender, and the outside pastry is incredibly crispy. Just listen to how crispy that pastry is.